All right, right now I do want to bring in Marshall Auerbach. He's senior fellow at the uh, Roosevelt Institute and consulting strategist with PIMCO. Auerbach authored a column on the Daily Beast this week entitled Don't Trust the Fed. He argues that monetary policy is not the only game in town and that the U.S. desperately needs some direct spending injected into the uh, economy. Marshall, great to have you here on Street Smart. If I take you back about a week ago, on some of the comments, or I should yep. say the comments that came out of uh, the Fed and, and Ben Bernanke specifically, really gave a lift to the markets. But you say that's not enough in terms of uh, correcting, easing the situation. We need more than what the Fed can do. Well, that, that's right. And I, and I think that um, uh, Bernanke himself uh, conceded at Jackson Hole uh, that uh, there's limits to what central bankers can do. And I think he's right about that. And I think uh, the market has... Uh, uh, severely misplaced confidence in the notion that quantitative, e quantitative easing is somehow going to alleviate the problems facing the economy. All quantitative easing does is uh, shift, uh, it shift assets around the Fed's balance sheet. It doesn't actually contribute to anything directly toward aggregate demand. So um, it's, a, it's a very, very misplaced uh, uh, hope that the, uh, um, the, the markets have. They think that's going to be the solution to our problem. So, Marshall, in your column on the Daily Beast where you say don't trust the Fed, I mean, your point is don't just rely on the Fed to kind of fix all this. You're saying we need more than that, and specifically stimulus. Yeah, clear. Yeah, clearly. I, I mean, the, the, the point is that, um, uh, look, what, what, I, what I've said is that um, relying on the interest rate weapon um, is, is much more variable. The outcomes are much less uh, certain. Um, for every um, debtor that has a high interest rate bill, you also have a pensioner or a Social Security recipient who needs that income. So if you cut rates, you're, there will be some losers, there will be some winners. Um, what I, the point I was trying to make is that fiscal policy is much more direct in terms of the impact it would have in terms mm -hmm. of generating jobs, aggregate demand. Etc. It's like uh, using a, a scalpel as opposed to a meat cleaver if you have surgery. You know, one thing though that you write about and you suggest is that the government could initiate a job guarantee program. This would come then from the government. Yes. Uh, talk to us a little bit about why that is or what exactly how it would work in your view. Okay, well. All right. Well, first of all, let me clarify that it would be funded by the government, but it could be administered at the local or municipal level. So I'm not um, talking about necessarily a new government mandated bureaucracy. Um, what I was uh, suggesting was that uh, instead of having programs which effectively uh, subsidize unemployment, we could have a government which actually stands in ready to offer uh, workers uh, jobs and, and benefits, uh, say a 35-hour week at a fixed level of benefits and, 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 and uh, income. Um, uh, the, the point I was trying to make was that um, the government is paying for this anyway in the form of unemployment. I would rather create a pool of shovel-ready em employment that the private sector could draw on when private sector output uh, improves. So in effect, you would have a counter-cyclical uh, um, um, uh, instrument in place permanently. It would uh, expand as unemployment goes up in the private sector, and it would decrease as uh, uh, unemployment goes down in the private sector. That was the whole purpose behind it. What? And it could replace a lot of the existing uh, welfare and uh, uh, unemployment insurance programs that we have in place today. So I don't think that the net cost to the government would be uh, that great. I think anybody, or there may be a lot of folks at home, Marshall, who are saying, you know, the government's involved already too much. Um, I don't want the government involved in some type of job guarantee program at this point. I mean, what, what, what are, what's the strongest argument? You say that they're wrong and you're right. Well, the, my argument is simple, that the government is involved whether they like it or not. I mean, it, it, the government uh, pays out unemployment insurance, it pays out uh, social welfare programs, it pays out for food stamps. So the point is, do you want the government to be involved in a way that enhances productive activity in the economy, or do you want it to be uh, doing something which is not only um, economically costly to uh, those of us who are out of work, but also has very many ne negative external externalities from a social perspective as well? I'm trying to suggest a program which actually promotes long-term employment and gets rid of the scourge of long-term unemployment. Uh, so it's not a question of whether the government is involved or isn't involved. The government mm. will be involved, but I'm trying to do it in a much more productive way. Well, it's certainly provocative and interesting, and uh, I know you've gotten a lot of feedback on this, so we'll see where it goes. Hey, Marshall, thank you so much.